I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you and I lift you up, Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, help me praise him. Oh, I love you. I love you. Tell him you love him. I love you, Lord, today. Oh, because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you and I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back. On Calvary, that's why I praise you and I lift you up. Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you and I lift you up. Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, put your blessed hands together and let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we certainly give an honor to the Lord. It's good for us to be here, saints. And God has been merciful to not just me, but all of us. He's just been a wonder. Oh, sweet wonder, we used to say. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, how I love him. How I adore him. Jesus, the Son of God. So we're here to give an honor to our God. Give an honor to the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give an honor to our presiding bishop, Bishop Charles E. Johnson and Lady Johnson. We also want to honor the diocesan of our council, Bishop Alfonso Bratcher and Lady Bratcher. Also want to give an honor to our council chairman, Bishop Philip Watkins and Lady Watkins, and also to the vice chairman, the angel of this house, Bishop Joseph Marcus and Lady Marcus. And of course, I want to give an honor to my first lady, Lady 
Faith Burroughs, amen, wife of 48 years. God has been good to us. And we thank God for his mercy, his mercy that endures forever. I know you can agree with that. God's been mighty good to you. He brought you through this pandemic. Oh, yes, he has. The world was turned upside down, but God had our back. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let's just praise him right now, right where you are. Can you just thank God, give him the glory, and shout hallelujah. Shout it like you mean it. Shout it like he's been good to you. Oh, nobody can tell. Tell it like you can tell it, how God has brought you through. And so today we thank God, amen, we're honored, amen, to be here today to share the word of the Lord with you. But we're going to go to the Lord, to the throne room, just for a brief moment, and just thank God for his goodness. Come on, pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for being that Savior, we thank you, O oh God, for being that great I am and the everlasting Father. We thank you for their traveling mercy to bring us all here today. We thank you because you've been merciful and your mercy endureth forever. We thank you for being that God that has been our protector. Lord, you brought us through the dark ways. Oh God, you brought us through the pandemic. And we can lift our hands and just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for keeping our hearts, keeping our minds, blessing us with praise in time of trouble and praise in the time of need. And oh God, here today, we ask you to bless as I share a portion of your word. Lord, let it be words of life, words of strength, words of healing, words of deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so we thank the Lord, amen, for allowing us this space. We want to call your attention to the book of St. John. Book of St. John, chapter number 19. Amen. And for your hearing, if you don't have your Bible, we will go through verses 26 through 37, just for a complete thought, so we can understand what's going on at this scene. And so verse 26, it says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was a set of vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the pre preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was at high noon, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he saw, and he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture, they shall look on him whom they pierced, and let the church say amen. The thought that I would like to share with you will be coming uh, in particularly from the verse number 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. 
and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Lesson, it is finished. So I want to share with you all those things that Jesus had to do before he uttered those words. I want to share in particular 16 things that Jesus had done, amen, to complete his mission. God had a purpose. God had a purpose. And so we must understand in that purpose there were some things that needed to be done before he can go back. Amen. Now remember, God was manifest in the flesh. We all know that. So we're going to go over to the book of St. John. I love John. Amen. John, the writer here, of course, was inspired like all the other writers. But he depicted Jesus in the divine authority, the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we find that John opens up in chapter number one, verse number one. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, this word was logos. In the beginning was the word, the logos, amen, God, amen, who is true. And it says the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And he goes on, amen, he talks about, in verse 9, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, amen, and he, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. They rejected him. But the Bible goes on to say, but as many, that is us, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. But I want to jump down to verse 14, and it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, I want to read it this way. And the word was made flesh and tabernacled among us. Oh, yes, God's presence tabernacled. Remember, no man can see God and live. So God was embodied. And I believe the writer over there in the book of Timothy began to say, great is the mystery of God. Godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. But while we're there, I would like to say it a little different than that, because this is a one God, amen, apostolic faith, amen, the oneness of God. We've learned the scriptures and we've learned them well. So I want to rehearse and say that the same scripture a little differently. And so in, in 1 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was justified in the spirit. God was seen of angels. God preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Somebody ought to say amen. And so as we walk through John here, we see them asking the, the John the baptizer. I don't like to call him John the Baptist. He was not a Baptist. He was a baptizer, a prophet sent by God. And so they was asking John, are you the one? And John was trying to tell them that he wasn't the one. So they began to ask him, well, are you Elijah? And they, well, that was no. And they just kept on asking him and Finally, John began to say that he wasn't worthy. He's among you. You'll see him. You'll learn him. You'll meet him. And he says that uh, he was the voice crying in the wilderness, crying in the wilderness to make straight the way of the Lord. 
as said the prophet Isaiah. And so they began to ask him. And so we go down here and now we see John began to tell them. And he said the next day here, we're in the next day, he says, John seeth Jesus coming and unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. John is prophesying. They didn't understand what John was talking about when John began to call him the Lamb which would take away the sin of the world. But John was actually prophesying. And we thank God that we know what John was talking about. Amen. So we go over to chapter number two and it says, and the third day there was a marriage in Cana. Now we understand that Jesus had an invitation and he brought the disciples with him. It was, it was really uh, an occasion, amen, that you had to, you could only go if you were invited and Jesus so happened to have been invited. And so we see here that when they uh, wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. Now they have drank all the wine. Jesus came. I don't know what time it was, but it couldn't have been in the very beginning. But by the time Jesus and the boys, they got there, they were out of wine. And his mother said, there is no wine. And so then Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatever he saith unto you, do it. And Jesus began to tell them to gather up the water pots and fill them with water. And so he, they filled, the, filled it with water. And then he began to tell them to pour it out. And when they poured it out, it was wine. So this was the first miracle they seen Jesus do. This was the first miracle. They knew there was something different about this man. And so we understand that. And when they, they drank well and they began to uh, uh, ask, the, the governor began to give an honor. And, and he said that the, usually the good stuff is in the beginning, but we see you have saved the best for last. But no, it was a miracle sent by God, done by the Lord Jesus himself. Oh, Jesus didn't really turn water into wine. Yes, he did. Saying that he didn't is almost like saying he didn't walk on water. Come on. Saying that he did not do this is almost like saying he couldn't heal the sick or raise the dead. But here's God manifest in the flesh. The mother knew it. She said, whatever he say, just do it. And so this was a miracle. And we understand. We move from there. And now they get a picture of what John was talking about when he says that he wasn't even worthy to unlatch it, the shoes of the Lord, but he came to present him. And so we understand now in chapter number three, there's another scene and there's a place over here. We talk about uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same one came to Jesus. Y'all know the story, but for those of you that do not, he came to Jesus by night, and he knew that something was different about this man, and so he says unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for the man can do these, no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God is with him. You know, there's something about the child of God. Anybody can pick you out if you're living like God say you live. I've had people stop me. You probably had people see stop you and they could see something different. We didn't act the same in turmoil. We didn't act the same in confusion in the office. Amen. We didn't act the same when there was a, a, a havoc and all the confusion that's going through the company or the corporation. Somebody came to me one day, my, the, 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 my job was going through something and they were call, making everybody work all kind of crazy hours. I had been away, but we found out when we got back, amen, from the convention, we understood that they had turned the tables and they said, you got to work 
all these crazy hours and Sundays too. Saturdays and Sundays. You know, you know how it is. You don't want nobody messing with your Sundays. Amen. And so the boss called me and told me that what was going on. And so I left his office. There's nothing I can say. But all right, thank you. And went back to my office. And here they come. Here come one young man and say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I said, well, this place needs much prayer. I didn't talk about anybody. My wife worked there as well. And we began to touch and agree and call on the name of Jesus. That's what you have to do. And after a while, the prayer wheels turned and the situation reversed. They called us into a big meeting and personnel was there. And the same man that said you got to work these crazy hours took it all back and said you can take your vacation. You can do what you want to do. You want to work all this time like we told you you had to but God knows how to work wonders. You got to pray, saints. And so we found out here the Lord moving in a mighty and special way. But the main particular part about this, when Nicodemus met the Lord and the Lord began, see, Jesus cut right through the trace, the chase. We understand the next thing that came out of Nicodemus's mouth. Now remember that the, the Nicodemus said that no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus went on and just jumped through the chase. And Jesus and answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That wasn't the question, but Jesus knew where this conversation was going to end up. So he just came right out and told Nicodemus, a man that had was a ruler and a man that had all kind of people under him. He would give orders for this, this one to do that and that that one to do that uh, and they had no uh, opinion or feeling about it uh, but they had to do what the ruler told them to do <laughs> but this is interesting because that wasn't the question Jesus goes right to it uh, Nicodemus said unto him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and and he is and he and be born uh, amen and Nicodemus and Jesus began to tell Nicodemus again, truly, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. My friend, if you're watching this, this may be a message to you and you alone, but you have to be born again. That's why we're going through. We're going to lead up to the things that Jesus had to do before he could say it is finished. We're seeing some of those things right now. And when we go over to chapter number four, we see there's a woman at the well. My God, she was a woman on the streets, a woman that loved men. And here Jesus is there. And the conversation starts up. And Jesus began to tell her all about herself. And then after a while, she knew this man was different from any other man she met. And Jesus began to tell her he can give her living water. Somebody say living waters uh, and so she didn't quite understand what that meant uh, and so she began the conversation started and Jesus began to tell her uh, that she must worship. God is looking for true worshipers. Uh, and for Jesus to make that statement, uh, basically he is saying there's false worshipers out there. Uh, but God is looking for true worshipers. Somebody say true worshipers. Uh, where is your relationship with God today? Uh, let it be in true worship and harmony. Uh, and as we go on and Jesus began to explain to this woman and began to tell her some things about herself. 
She thought she could hide it from Jesus, but she couldn't do it. And the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye sh ye neither uh, in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem uh, worship the Father. Yeah. Then he said, you worship, you know not what you worship. Uh, we know, he says, uh, what we worship uh, for salvation is of the Jews. Uh, then the Bible tells us, but the hour cometh uh, and draw now and now is uh, when the true worshipers uh, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Listen, whenever you're reading the word of God and you see the word shall, it's like a word, a, a contract, amen, that you cannot break. It's a contract. We go look at your old contracts, and it'll give you all kind of clauses, telling this with a shall, and saying this with a shall, and you shall do this, and you shall do that. Is hidden in the contract. It makes the contract unbreakable. And so whenever you read it in the word of God, we must understand God's word is true. He don't go back on his word. And John, John began to write it. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. For we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. It's a word in the affirmative. And we know that God's going to come back like he said he would. And so we keep on walking by faith. And we go here and we see different miracles that Jesus began to do. And so we come now and we're going to come to chapter number five. And we see Jesus moving and we see there is now there at the Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches oh we had the honor and we were able to go to Jerusalem go to Israel and we were able to see the pool of Bethesda oh it was like a ruins but they showed us this pool and all we can do is think to ourselves and say to one another how many times we taught about it. How many times we talked about it? How many times we preached about it? But now we can visually see. So there's an impotent man there, a man that has been struggling for 40 years trying to get healed. The Bible tells us here that the waters once a year or every now and then. We see that the angel of the Lord will come and trouble the waters. And the first one that will step in, no matter what their condition is, God heals them right on the spot. Oh, my, my, my. And so we, this man will complain. Nobody is there to put me when I try to make it. Somebody step in my way. But Jesus began, this was another miracle that Jesus began to do. And so he began to tell the man, take up your bed and walk. My God, my God. And so now this man got up. Yes, Jesus worked it out. Somebody say he worked it out. Yes, for the father loveth his son and showeth him all things. Uh -huh. He showed him greater works than these 
shall ye that ye may marvel. And so in verse number 21, still in the fifth chapter, for as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. God knows how to save you. He knows how to cleanse you. He knows how to pick you up. And so we're going to move right on here. But let's look at verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth that they have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. But everybody's going to rise. Everybody's going to rise. Yes, they are. Well, we got to make sure that we're ready when he comes. Let's move on to chapter the number six, and it talks about, uh, amen, uh, Philip here, uh, uh uh-huh, uh-huh, Philip is talking, talking to Philip, uh, and we see one of the disciples, uh, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said unto him, uh, there is a lad now to hear at the, mer- the mountain, uh, sermon on the mountain, uh, the Beatitudes we hear, uh, and now they're, they're, they're there, and Jesus is getting ready to teach, uh, and there's nobody with food, uh, but they began to say, Lord, uh, and in fact, uh, the Bible tells us it's about 5,000 and men, not including women and children. We know children were there because the lad was there. And so we must understand if everybody uh, everybody had a wife uh, then they had at least two or three children uh, and now all of a sudden uh, that men, 5,000 men uh, not including women and children uh, could be as much as fifteen to 20,000 people uh, and Jesus is working a miracle here eh, because uh, he is a miracle worker uh, I don't know what your needs are but Jesus knows it uh, and I'm going to tell you right now He is still a miracle worker, but he's working on getting the things done and straightening out the things that need to be done before he can utter these words. It is finished. And so they said, and Jesus said, he took the loaves because they said there was a lad here with five barley loaves and two small, who who loves small fishes? I think we want a fish, we want a big one, don't we? But two small fishes. But when the Lord get ready, when God gets a hold of what your needs are, God will do more than you can even ask or think. Somebody say thank you Jesus. Come on put your blessed hands together and give God the praise. He's been mighty good. Look at the miracle worker. And so now he takes and he blesses it. And all of a sudden, they had baskets and baskets of fragments after everybody ate just from five loaves of bread and from two fishes, two small fishes. God knows how to make a little bit be more than enough. God has proven it over and over again. He has made a way out of no way. Somebody say hallelujah. And God is still doing it. He's still making a way out of no way. And we have testimonies about it. And so we move on here. That was another miracle. But by the time we get to chapter number seven, they wanted to kill Jesus. They was tired of all the things that he was doing. They was trying to accuse him of breaking the law. Uh, but Jesus didn't come to destroy the law, he would tell them. But he came to fulfill it. Uh, and God is still moving. Uh, he has things that he wants to do through us. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, and so chapter number six, they, chapter number seven, uh, they want to kill him. Uh, but by the time we get to, uh, and when they wanted to kill you back in those days, they were serious. Uh, but we, we get to chapter number eight. Uh, now Jesus 
feasts, that the Jews' feast of the tabernacle was at hand. And now at the Jews' feast, his brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Jerusalem, into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doth any thing in secret, and he knoweth and himself seeketh to know openly. If thou do go these do these things, then thyself show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come. So the Bible tells us Jesus he didn't want his time was not come. He knew what they wanted to do. He knew they didn't like him because all he did was good things. People may not like it because they just don't feel like it. They don't like that you worship the Lord. They don't like that you go to church all the time. They don't like that you're so nice. You're so polite. But keep on doing it, saints. My God, because God's way is mighty sweet. And I can tell you this story. A story that we were having, we were having a street meeting, and we were outside the church. Used to have street meetings a lot of times, but this one particular time, we're set up outside the church. And you know, sometimes people won't come in the church, but they'll stand on the outside and or have a chair. Some of them brought chairs, and we had singing, and I did some preaching. And after we finished, the next next door neighbor said came to me and said are you going to have a street meeting next Friday too I said no ma'am we won't be having one next Friday her response to me was well thank the Lord my God my God no kind of encouragement she was supposed to be a deacon in a church a church woman and she's thanking God that we wouldn't be out there the next Friday y'all hear what I'm saying so we was doing nothing but good but everybody I don't like your goodness but the same lady she got sick and went to the hospital and we went to the hospital she recognized us she knew who we were and I said a prayer for her I asked God for the deliverance for her. I asked God for power on her for her. And saints, after that, when she came out of the hospital, she was one of the best neighbors you ever want to have. She was so kind to us. So they hated Jesus because he did all this good. He fed folk when they were hungry. He healed the man that needed to be healed. He turned water into wine. He told the woman at the well so much about himself. You see, and now when she left, she went to town and she said, come see a man who told me all about myself. But that's what we want is a relationship with Jesus. He knows how to clean us up. When we get dirty, he knows how to fix it. And sometimes all we got to say is fix it, Jesus. Lord, I need your help. Talk to him. Let him know where you're at with your struggles. He already know. But acknowledge him to be able. And when God shows up, He's always more. I say God shows up and God shows off. And we see God moving. And here we were nice to the lady. And I'm reminded. Let me go back to chapter 6 and verse 63. That Jesus began to say the words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. But remember in first John, the first chapter of John, he said, he began to say, in him was life and the life was the light of man. I tell people from time to time when I'm teaching or preaching, I tell them you don't have to 
be the sergeant of arms for God. His scriptures support itself. It's not just one scripture, but they're supporting scriptures. And now in verse chapter number six, Jesus spoke it because John wrote it. And John said, in him was life. And so in Jesus' life, when he speaks, he speaks life. And when Jesus said, it happens. And when he spoke to the winds and the waves, they obeyed his will. And they got calm. And when they began to say to Jesus, the water was real bad. Master, do you... Don't you care whether we perish? They thought Jesus would sleep. But I'm reminded of a story. I was going out of the country and I called up T-Mobile. And those of you that know this, if you go out of the country, they give you these exorbitant rates. And I found out, I called them up. I said, how do I turn this thing off? And she began to tell me, sir, when you turn off your phone, it's not really off. No. She said, you got to go go in, you got to go into settings, and she began to explain to me what I had to turn off and all this, and I'm thinking about Jesus, he looked like he was asleep, but he wasn't asleep, he knew everything that was happening, he knows what you're going through, you don't have to ask God to help you, just talk to him, tell him what you're going through, tell him you can't do it alone, and watch him work, I wrote a song, just watch God work, and so now here. They want to kill him but in chapter number 8. My God, I love this because Jesus began to talk to them. Jesus know how to stir you up. I said Jesus know how to stir up a crowd. Jesus know how to get them where they don't want to be. And so they're talking here. There's a conversation. Then said the Jews unto him. I'm reading verse 52 in chapter number 8 of John. Unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead. And the prophets thou said, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste of death. Uh, art thou then our father uh, Abraham which is dead uh, and the prophets dead uh, who makest thou thyself uh, hallelujah uh, Jesus answered if I honor myself. My honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he that he is your God. Yet have ye not known him? But I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his commandments. Jesus is rounding up the crowd. He's calling them liars right to their face. But then verse number 56 it says, he says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was dead, glad. And verse 57, then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen, how has the seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Those are some fighting words to a crowd that was already mad at him for speaking nothing but the truth. They wanted to kill him. And so the Bible says, then took they up stones to cast at him. And Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. Now, I want you to understand clearly. Jesus didn't crawl out. Jesus didn't run out. Jesus didn't tell the boys surround me. But the Bible said he walked out through the midst of them. They picked up the stones and they didn't know where he was. He hid himself. Listen to some revelation. My God, if a God can, and if Jesus can talk to the winds and the waves, and if Jesus can walk on the waters, then Jesus can become invisible and walk right through them. That's my commentary there. He invisibilized himself. To say that's impossible, 
can you say he couldn't raise Lazarus? They say it's impossible, remember? Jesus walked through the wall. They thought it was a ghost. My God, my God. I know you're going to say, well, that was after the resurrection. But he was still God manifest in the flesh. As John said, in the beginning, God. Well, as Moses wrote, in the beginning, God. And as John wrote, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, the Elohim God, that Moses wrote about. In the beginning, God, the Elohim God, the creator God. And so Jesus walked out. He didn't run out. He walked out through the midst of them. And so now we get to the place in chapter number nine. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But I want to get over to chapter number 10. And there's another situation going on. And Jesus began to talk to them. And I'm going to look at verse number 7. Then said Jesus unto them again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. He said, I am the door. And whenever Jesus talked prophetically, and he said, I am. Tomorrow he's still I am. Next week he's still I am. My God is a God that is present. In the present sense, I am. My God. God, can you see it? He's telling them I am. He told Moses, just tell them I am sent you. My God, that is the God that can do whatever he wants to do. When he do it. How he does it. You can't stop him from doing it. Because when God shows up, God shows out. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Let me close this up here. And so we find here, Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's his mission. He said, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. In other words, the thief cometh not but for steal, to kill, and destroy. But I come to reverse the curse. I come to take you out of your sins. I come to deliver you. I come to bring you through. I come to bring you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Let me close up here. And we keep on going. And Jesus said, no man taketh my life. He said, I was teaching this one day. It says, no man taketh it from me. But I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. And have the power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my father. And one of the members said, where's that found? My God, my God. We don't make this stuff up. It's God's word. We don't make this stuff up. God gives it to us. That's why I'm giving you this. And so now we see as we move on along. And I'm going to catapult my God over here into the 19th chapter. And I want you to go with me. Oh, before this point. Jesus is on the streets of Jerusalem trying to make his way up to Golgotha's hill. Now, Jerusalem, I want you to understand the streets of Jerusalem are not that wide. It's like cobblestones, but the real big cobblestones. And it gradually goes up. You see a step every now and then. But imagine on both sides, there's nothing but merchants trying to get your attention, trying to get you to buy something. And so when we walk the street, and it's very narrow. Uh, the street width may be from that wall uh, to the end of this. No, not even that. To, to the end of the podium here. Uh, you couldn't get a, a, a car up it uh, because people are walking in the streets and merchants. Uh, it's almost like an alley, y'all. Uh, I don't know what you had in your mind, but there it is. Uh, the streets of Jerusalem was very narrow. Uh, and so now we see here uh, as we're going down and Jesus is going down. Uh, he's going up towards Golgotha's hill. 
And as we went through, and we had the guide telling us and showing us every place that Jesus fell, they marked it with a plaque. Hallelujah. But we find out somewhere along the line. Must Jesus bear the cross along? Well, we understand that someone, a centurion, a soldier, helped Jesus after a while. My God, where was the 12? My God, but you know God knows who to use in the time that he needs to use them. And so we're fine here. He's going up through here. He's getting there. But my God, it's taken a while. He did all this. He could have called 10,000 angels. But we find here that Jesus, let's look at this chapter here. And Jesus is now, he's on the cross and he's talking to his mother. And he's given, remember, in him was life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So as long as Jesus kept talking, he could not die because he talked life. He gave life to the, to the blind. He gave life to the dead. He gave life to the sick. He gave life to the lepers. He moved on and he just spoke the words. Go show yourself to the priests. My God, without even touching them. God's spoken word is enough. We need to eat more of God's word. Read more of God's word. Walk more of God's word. Preach more of God's word. We need it. Yes, we do. Because they are words of life. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so now here. He's up there, but he says it is finished. And I want to share with you 16 things that had to happen before Jesus could do it. He did all that we talked about and even more that I didn't include. But he had to do all of that before he could say these three words. It is finished. And so what is finished? The fulfillment of all scriptures, uh, of the sufferings of Christ. I'm going to go through them and then come back. Number two, uh, defeat of Satan. Number three, uh, breaking down the middle wall of petition uh, to make Jews and Gentiles one. He had to do all this uh, before he could say it was finished. Uh, Reason number four, uh, the way for the personal access to God. Uh, Number five, uh, the consolation of the reign of death. Number six, the consolation of sin's power. Number seven, the demonstration of obedience and love and faith. Number eight, perfection of Christ. Number nine, salvation from all sin. That's what he gave us. Number 10, make a peace between God and making peace between God and man. Number 11, death penalty paid for all. One song said, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. All to him I owe. Uh, hallelujah. Reason number 12, uh, the cancellation of the mortgage claim of Satan uh, and freeing of man uh, and his dominion from sin and Satan. Reason number 13, uh, satisfaction to all full justice of God. Uh, reason number 14, uh, bodily healing for all. Uh, Reason number 15, uh, he couldn't say it is finished yet uh, until he did this, saints, uh, a way for the full endowment of power uh, and full anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, And reason number 16, uh, the blotting out of the old covenant uh, and making and sealing the new covenant. Uh, Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, I wanted to give all 16 uh, because time is running short. Uh, And let me go back to reason number one, uh, to fulfill all scriptures of the sufferings of Christ. Uh, When we see in Psalms 22 uh, and verse one, it says, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from me? And from words of my roaring. Isaiah said, wait a minute. 
53 verses 1 through 5. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness. Isaiah is prophesying, y'all. And he, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hear as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and he, we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne grief, our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He said, but, when you look at the word but, but is used to introduce a phrase or a clause in contrasting with what has already been mentioned. That almost like saying Selah. Uh, he said, but uh, he was wounded. Somebody say he was wounded uh, for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised. Somebody say, yes, he was bruised uh, for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement of our peace uh, was upon him uh, and with his stripes we are healed hallelujah we used to sing a song I am healed by the wounds in his side my God but he didn't say a mumbling word somebody said this has nothing to do with natural healing oh yes it does my God my God natural and spiritual too and so we thank God amen for the word number two let me go on to the feet of Satan in John 12 and 31 now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast out that's why he had to make sure that was done and if I if I be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me he had to defeat Satan my God my God God. We look at number uh, we look at another scripture uh, in Colossians 2 and 14, uh, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances uh, that was against us, uh, which was contrary to us, uh, and took it out of the way. He nailing it to the cross and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of any holy day, of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. He defeated the devil. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through his death he might destroy, there you go, huh? destroy him that had power of death. That is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetimes subject to bondage. He freed us. Reason number three. He couldn't say it is finished because he had to break down the middle wall of partition to make Jews and Gentiles Gentiles 1, Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 14, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of attrition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, one new man, hallelujah, and so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof. That's why he went to the cross. That's why Jesus died for us. That's why he had to do all these things before he can say it is finished. My God, God number four, for the way of personal access to God, he had to make sure that was intact. 
Again in Ephesians chapter 2 there. Verses 13 to 18. But here in Hebrews it says, chapter number 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, the boldness to enter to the holiest by G, by blood, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having and having an high priest uh, over the house of God, uh, let us draw nigh with a true heart uh, in full faith, uh, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience. Uh, Y'all know we were evil folk uh, before we came to the church. At least I was. Uh, my God, my God, I didn't go to church. Uh, my mother didn't go to church. Uh, my father didn't go to church. Uh, but Jesus paved the way for us. Uh, he paved the way. And one day I went to a meeting one night. My heart wasn't right, but something got a hold of me. Thank God I went down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the water, like somebody said, and the water was cold. Chilled my body, but not my soul. But I kept on walking by faith. Uh, and one day God filled me uh, with his precious Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. He made a way uh, for you too, my friend. Uh, don't go to church uh, and don't, receive, don't, don't go without receiving your blessing. Uh, don't go to church for any old reason. Uh, but go there to meet God. Uh, go there to be saved. Uh, go there to be delivered. Go there to have your mind changed. Have your heart regulated. That's why Jesus died on the cross to shed his blood. And we, we sing a song. Who can tell? What, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We thank God for the blood. We thank God for the name and tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, the name of Jesus, the devil's got to flee. When you call on Jesus, the atmosphere will change. When you call on Jesus, he knows how to answer your prayer. Hallelujah. And when he shows up, get ready for your blessing. And when he shows up, uh, get ready for your deliverance. Uh, he couldn't just uh, come and just go to the cross. Uh, but there was things that he did uh, before he could say it is finished. Uh, he made a way uh, that we can all uh, get together uh, and get ready uh, to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And when you look over there at verse number 51, well, first of all, earlier up, Paul writes and he said he heard there was some among you that said there is no resurrection of the dead. But saints of God, why should anybody listen to anybody that don't love the Lord? Uh, that's why we got to pray for our governors. Uh, we got to pray for our government. Uh, we got to pray for our president. Uh, we got to pray that they seek the mind of God uh, and seek the wisdom of the God that we serve. Uh, because the laws that they make affect us, God's people. Uh, so we got to pray. Y'all hear me? Uh, I say we got to pray. Uh, and over here uh, in the book of uh, Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and we go down to the 51st verse. Lord have mercy. And it says here, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. There's that shell, y'all, I told you about. That means it's going to happen. He says it in the affirmative. It's like a contract that can't be broken. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet.
trump for the trumpet shall sound now i don't know if you ever thought about this trumpet but let me explain something to you god's trumpet is not like the trumpet here on earth it's a trumpet that you've never seen before it's a trumpet that you never heard yet but this trumpet is different from earthly trumpets because this trump when it sounds it shakes the very ground this trump that is sounded it wakes up the dead you hear me this trump when it sounds it changes us from mortal to immortality so God's trumpet is not like the trumpets we see God's trumpet probably don't even listen or sound like or look like the trumpets here on earth because this trumpet will change everything it's going to change those that are dead six feet under or in the river wherever they are it's going to bring them up hallelujah and we that remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air somebody will say hallelujah we don't know but this trumpet it gets everybody's attention this trumpet it sounds different moves and shakes the very ground my God we think thunder can shake but I tell you the God's trumpet it'll change us and look what happens and then we see now it says uh, the sting of death well it says 55 uh, oh death uh, where is thy sting uh, oh grave where is thy victory uh, you see now we can look back uh, when it happens not that we would care because it's happening y'all uh, but we can say death uh, where is your sting now uh, grave uh, where is your victory now uh, the bible says the sting of death is sin uh, and the strength of sin is, is the law uh, he says but thanks be to God uh, which giveth us the victory uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ uh, therefore my brethren be ye steadfast not wishy-washy unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, put your blessed hands together and shout hallelujah. That's why he hung up there. That's why he went to the cross. That's why Jesus had to do all these things before he could say it is finished. But that's not where the story ended. The Bible tells us three days later he rose again and I'm going to go back with him are you going to go back with him I said I'm going to go back with him but when Jesus made the way yeah, and all these things were made possible uh, that we might have uh, the tree of life uh, we understand the reason uh, and after he had done all this uh, he said it uh, is finished uh, my God now somebody said uh, that he gave one to the thieves heaven uh, no he did not uh, and then prove it prove it preacher uh, because three days later when Mary wanted to touch him he said do not touch me don't touch me I have yet ascended I haven't yet ascended to my father in heaven so if he gave the thief heaven why would he tell her he hasn't gone there yet but somebody when Jesus said this day will you be with me in paradise that was in heaven because three days later uh, he rose uh, three days later uh, don't touch me uh, my God my God uh, and I'm so glad uh, for the God that we served uh, he put up with man throughout creation uh, he put up to man uh, from the garden of Eden my God uh, God gives a law uh, and we can't just do what we want to do uh, we got to know he said it was finished uh, so that we could be saved Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is real. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, God is real. For he has washed 
and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real. I can feel him in my soul. Shout hallelujah. He said it is finished. Then one writer said it got dark like it was nighttime. And another writer said that the graves opened up. My God, my God. Can you imagine? That's why when Jesus called Lazarus from the grave, he had to call him specifically. Because if he said, dead rise, oh my. But he called him specifically. And so God calls us specifically. I don't know what he called you to do. I don't know what you he called you to do. But this I say unto you, whatever you do, do it as unto God. Not unto men, but unto God. For Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. All to him I owe. Hallelujah. And so, saints today, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is our prayer. And I know God is still working. He is a miracle worker. There is none like him. One writer said, there is none like you. There is none like you. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. God be with you till we meet again. Be blessed. Praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you for tuning in to AFFI District 1's Virtual Council. It's offering time. And there are multiple ways for you to give. First, you can visit the AFFI District 1 website. Click the Donate tab and use the PayPal. We do accept all of these types of cards. Or option number two, open the cash shop on your phone, type in your dollar amount, and send to dollar sign AFFID1. Remember, Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Go ahead, take a few moments to sow into this ministry. Don't forget to tune back in when you're done giving.
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bishop Watkins, chairman of the FFI District 1. And we have had a powerful service tonight. Did not you enjoy the Word of God tonight? Oh my God. Listen, can I tell you something? We want to pray for you concerning whatever it is upon your heart tonight. Whatever the need may be, we've got prayer warriors waiting to touch with you in prayer and agree with you in the things that God wants to do. Look at the bottom of the screen. We have a phone number there, an email, and we have warriors waiting to pray with you. I believe God wants to do something wonderful for you tonight. You just got to make the call. Make the call. It's right there on the screen. They're waiting for you to call. Come on, join with us tonight in prayer. And whatever you do, keep Jesus first.